In this video, we will be learning about the eDrawings preview inside of SOLIDWORKS PDM. This preview is available in both PDM Standard and Professional, and it does not require a CAD license to use. The eDrawings preview has quick loading times and plenty of functionality which we will be taking a look at in this video. The three main sections that we will discuss are the variable list on the right hand side, the view controls on top of the graphics area, and lastly, the controls at the bottom of the window. So let's get started by looking at the variable list on the right hand side. So all we need to do to access the preview tab is select the file that we want to preview. So in this case, I'll choose this top level assembly here, and we can see in a matter of seconds, I get a preview of this file. So to get a better view of the preview tab, I'm going to use this full screen option in the top right hand corner, so we can really focus on this preview tab. When you are full screen, you're not limited to just the preview tab. We can see in the top left hand corner here, I can choose between any of my tabs here to view them in full screen. So this list on the right hand side shows all of the variables that are attached to the file, as well as the information populated by each of these variables. So I can see, for example, variable author, I can see it was created by Brandon Adkins right here with BA. So looking at this list, I can right click on any of these variables and we have two options here. We have edit variable and show local version number. So we'll start by choosing edit variable. And when I choose this, it will open up the data card, which I can go ahead and manipulate this data card to fill it out if the model was checked out. So currently, I don't have the model checked out, so I can't make any changes to the data card. But if I wanted to make changes, I would go check the model out, and then I can edit the data card. And we can see that we can edit the data card directly from the preview tab. From the same edit variable screen, we also have some tabs up here at the top, such as general, which will show you the normal Windows file properties. So if I were to right click on the file in the Windows and choose properties, this is what would show, where you can choose read only access from a Windows level as well. And we also have a file permissions tab, so we can allow everyone to see this file or only following groups to see this file. And I can check on which groups are allowed to see this file. Using this method is the same as changing the Windows properties of the file. For things like the read only and file permissions, it's best practice to set these properties up inside of the PDM vault. So if you're planning on using this window, please talk to your PDM administrator first. So I won't change anything here, I'll just go ahead and press OK. The next option here, when I right click on one of these variables, is to show the local version number. So currently we are just looking at the variables that we've created, but when we choose show local version number, I can see that this local version of the part, I can see what state it's in, which workflow it's in, the last state or workflow that it was saved in, local version, revision, and category. So some of these baked in variables for us, we can see based on the local version of this file. So this list can be good to give you an overview of all of the variables in a list format while looking at a preview of this part as well. So now that we've taken a look at this variable list and see how we can make some changes and just basically how it gives you an overall view of the information about your part, let's next take a look at these view controls at the top of our graphics area. So these view controls are the same for all CAD file types, and they are used to manipulate the view of our part. The first option is select, which allows us to click on the model and make selections. So you can see here, I can select any one of these parts. If I ever needed to right click, I can hide, make transparent, hide others, show all. I can see select, we can view, which gives us some of those other options that we also are gonna look at up at the top. We can animate our view, which we can also see there's an option down below, which we'll take a look at later, as well as print. So if I go ahead and I press print here, we can go ahead and take this view and print out this view on whichever printer that we have set up, right? You can edit all of your printer options here. I can see if I show a preview, this is what the preview of our print is going to look like. 
So continuing on, I can see that my next view control here is pan. So if I go ahead and I select pan, I can click and drag and I can pan my assembly around left, right, up, down. We can also rotate as well. So this can be accomplished by either selecting the middle mouse wheel, just like you would inside of SolidWorks, or I can click on rotate here and by using left click, I can rotate my model. Next is going to be a regular zoom. Again, this can also be accomplished with your mouse by scrolling your mouse wheel forward or backwards. But again, by using the mouse control, by selecting zoom here, I can left click and move upwards to zoom in or downwards to zoom out. There are a few other zoom controls here, as well as zoom to area. So if I just wanted to zoom to this area over here, I can click and make a box and it'll go ahead and zoom to that box. And lastly, for my zoom controls, I can select this option here to zoom to fit. This can also be accomplished by just pressing F on your keyboard. So if I was zoomed out and rotated over here, I can use my keyboard shortcuts just like I would inside of SolidWorks as well. So I can press F to zoom to fit. I can even press Control 7 to go to an isometric view. So continuing on down the list, we can also see some view settings here. So I can make this perspective, which will change the view, giving us a little bit more perspective on this part making the closer things larger, the farther things smaller, as well as this ambient occlusion setting as well, which will change the lighting for our part if we have that set up. So these are just some regular view settings, which can also be found inside of SolidWorks as well. So I'll go ahead and I'll shut these off. And our last two view settings here are gonna be our orientation and display style. So for our view orientation, just like in SolidWorks, I can choose a top view, a front view, left, right, back, bottom, even any kind of isometric view here as well. And I also have view normal to plane, and there's an option to look at my exploded view if you had that set up in the CAD model as well. So we're going to skip over this exploded view for now, because we'll also notice that later there are some options here at the bottom to accomplish that for us as well. And lastly, we have display style here, which is just like inside of SolidWorks. We can choose shaded with edges. I can choose shaded. We can choose hidden lines removed. We can choose hidden lines visible. And lastly, wireframe. So using these options up top, we can manipulate the view of our part similarly to the heads up toolbar inside of SolidWorks. So now that we've taken a look at the options up top for our view settings, let's take a look at some of the functions that we have available to us on the bottom here. For the last part of this video, we will be taking a look at these controls at the bottom of our preview tab. So looking at these three windows here, we see an assembly file on the left, a part file in the middle, and a drawings file on the right. Looking at the first two pictures, we notice that the controls at the bottom of the part file and the assembly file are very similar. The only difference is that the assembly file has three more controls, explode, move, and components. So with that being said, I will skip over the part preview in this example, because all of the controls that are found in the part file are the same as in the assembly file, except that the assembly has those three extra controls. We'll also notice on the drawing file on the right hand side that we have two controls, layers and sheets that are not available to us in the assembly or part environments. So looking at the difference between these three environments, let's dive into our vault to look at our assembly controls and our drawing controls. Starting off in my assembly environment, we can take a look at these controls that we see here at the bottom of our preview tab. The first control is going to be this reset button. This is going to reset the position and orientation. So similarly to zoom to fit and an isometric view, if I was zoomed out, rotated around here and press reset, it's going to zoom to fit and put me back to an isometric view. Next, I can take a look at this animate control. And when I press this animations here and press play, all this does is it takes my different view orientations and it animates the transition between each different view. So we started in isometric, 
we went to a left, a front, a right. I can now see that we're going to go to a top, and it'll just go through my different view orientations here. And when I press stop, I can always reset to bring me back to a normal view. The next control here is going to be the explode control. So if you have an exploded view set up in your assembly here, you can see by sliding this bar, I can either collapse or expand my exploded view. Zooming into the exploded view, I can see all of the internal components. When I hover my cursor over a component, I get this nice tooltip that gives a ton of information about each component so that I don't have to go digging for it. We see information here such as part number and description. So I can collapse my exploded view. And again, always just hit reset to get back to that normal view. The next tool we'll be looking at is the move tool. So by selecting move, I have a couple of different options here. I have a free drag, I have position, we can translate and we can rotate. So we can use these tools to move individual components. So with free drag selected, I can grab this sprocket here and drag it wherever I'd like. You can also use your position here. I can move this in whichever direction here. I can move this up 10 inches in the Y direction. We can also translate here so you can increment by however many inches. I can translate in the X, in the Y, in the Z, things like that, as well as rotate. So I can rotate 45 degrees or however many degrees I want in the X, Y, or Z. All right, and once you're done moving that singular component, we can always press reset to get back to where we were. The next control is going to be this measure control. So if I go ahead and I choose measure, even without any CAD licenses or any background knowledge, just by looking inside of my PDM vault and selecting this file, I can zoom in and I can even take measurements of this file. So if I was looking at this sprocket component, maybe I just wanted to look at this feature right here. What is the diameter of this hole? I can go ahead and select on the hole and that will give me a diameter of 12.7 as well as the coordinates of its center point. So using this measurement tool, I can measure in whichever unit I want here. We can look at angles so we're using degrees or radians. I can even choose some selection filters down here. I can select just faces, just edges, or just vertices. So this measure tool will give us a lot of information about our part. So again, I'll go ahead and I'll reset my part back to where we were. So we can take a look at our next control, which is going to be the section view. So by selecting section view, I can either do this at a X, Y plane, we can do this at the Y, Z plane, or the Z, X plane. You can also select a face first and then use that face as a section plane. I can also view normal to the plane, which will bring me normal to my selected plane. And I can also flip the side that I'm looking at. So this is a section view here, right? If I wanted to change my section plane, I can again go normal to that plane, or I can rotate and just take a look at wherever I need to look. So I'll go ahead and I'll hop out of the section view and reset our view. So we can take a look at our last couple of options here. So I'll see properties, which will show me all of the custom properties here. I can't edit any of these, but I can take a look at what these custom properties are. I can see my entire list here as well as any properties that are specific to this configuration. So things like author, project name, date, things like that. For our next two tools, we will be using this ratchet body example. So we'll be looking at annotations and configurations. If you can't see all of the tools at the bottom, if it ever gets cut off, you can always grab your graphics view and expand that outward to reveal all of the tools. I can now see configurations here. So first looking at annotations, I can select the annotations tool and I can turn on whichever annotation views I'd like, or I can orient to those annotation views just by selecting the actual name itself. So by selecting the word, you will orient to that annotation view and by selecting the box, you can turn them either on or off. We can also see configurations. 
And by opening up configurations, I can see on the right hand side, I have all of these tabs that represent each of my configurations. And I can flip easily between each configuration just by choosing the configuration from this menu here. So I can see I have a total of five configurations. And lastly, I can choose components here, which shows me all of the components that are found in this assembly. So this will show me all of the sub assemblies and all of their components as well. I can even filter through this list by searching for things. So looking for that spacer that we took a look at in that exploded view. If I just type in spacer here and press enter, you can see that this gives me the all of the parts with the description that has spacer in it. So we can see all of these different spacer here. So now that we've looked at all of the different tools that we have available to us in the assembly environment, let's take a look at the drawing environment. So I've gone ahead and I found a drawing file for us here, and we can see that we are now in the drawing environment. So looking at the preview tab for the drawing environment, we can see that it looks pretty similar to our assembly environment, although we have these two new options here, layers and sheets. So we're going to start by looking at sheets here, and I can see that if I select the sheets option, we have our multiple sheets here. I can even see on the right hand side, I can get my information for my forged sheet and my machine sheet. And looking at my forged sheet, I can expand that. I can see my border, my drawing view one through four, right? As I select these, it highlights the drawing view in the preview here. I can even double click to switch between sheets here. You can see I've just changed to my machined sheet. So we're now on the machined sheet. And on the sheet here, I actually have some layers set up as well. So we can see that we can switch between the two sheets. But now that we're on the machined sheet, I can go ahead and open up my layers and I can see I have test here. And when I turn that on, I can see my test annotation. I have test two. I can see that test two annotation here. So you can activate and deactivate layers just by selecting them here from this previews tab. So throughout this video, we were able to see the eDrawings preview tab of the SolidWorks PDM environment and how it gave us a ton of information about our CAD files without the use of SolidWorks or a SolidWorks license. We saw the variable list on the right hand side for a quick view of our files metadata, which can be edited from this window, as well as some view settings up top to manipulate the view of our file. And lastly, we saw the controls on the bottom, which gave us a bunch of information about our file. This has been an eDrawings preview inside of SolidWorks PDM. And if you like this video, please be sure to check out our YouTube channel.